Welcome back for an all new preview of our eagerly anticipated small block Ford Supercharger. We're back with our good friend Frank at Dandy Engines, and this man knows a thing or two about small block Fords. Hey Heath, um, well, you know, I love my small block Fords, and um, when you came up with the idea of building one, uh, like a blower kit for a, a low deck 8.2302 Windsor based engine, I was pretty excited, you know. We had some great results with the Godzilla combinations, those episodes are on the channel, you can check those out. but. We've taken the 2650 technology and developed an intercooled solution. So we're looking at a 302 Windsor, and that is a common combination? Yes, the 302, we call it the 302 Windsor-based engine because like this one in particular has a 347 stroker crank. But then if you venture into a, a dart block or a motorsport Ford block, you can make them as big as 363 cubic inches like this engine. So this engine is a pretty basic engine. It's an off-the-shelf cylinder head. It's an off-the-shelf block, off-the-shelf pistons, rods, and crankshaft. The camshaft is nothing exotic. It's only a, a 230 at 50 camshaft, which is generally what we put in every common 347 that we do. Now you've built the engine for us. We ran it aspirated with a carby. With a dual plane manifold, it makes what it typically would make with something that's got that 10 to one compression, 230 at 50 camshaft. It made like 450 horsepower, pretty, pretty easy. I think it was on the third pull and we were pretty happy with that. So after running it aspirated with the carby, we've put the supercharger on. It's obviously EFI. This particular 2650 is running the optional 110 front cover. It's got the 110 millimeter throttle plate. It's got cable actuation. We do offer this with the option of drive-by-wire. Special mention of fuel tech who looking after the engine control for us. Runs a cam sync. There's two different drives. We've got a integrated drive here that's got power steering and AC integrated. And we've also got the heavy duty drive. We've run the engine on both front drive assemblies to see where the performance is at. But on pump fuel and modest boost, this has made pretty nice numbers. Yeah, that whole front belt drive system is perfect for a guy like me that wants to build an engine and give it to the customer complete. You know, you can buy a blower kit, now you can buy the, the drive kit with the alternator power steering aircon, which most people want. And as pump fuel, that belt system had no problems punching out 14 PSI, and it was an easy 812 horsepower. And the pulley ratio, 75 on the top, I believe, and I think it's a 160 millimeter lower. So the blower's really in its sweet spot at 14 pounds. It is so happy. You know, we didn't even try and make power and it punched out 800. Now imagine having this in your Mustang or your XY or XW. You can't even use 800 horsepower on the street. Well, the power is one thing, but the torque low down is where the driver's gonna really feel it. We didn't even try pulling the engine any lower than 4,500. I, I suppose it's a bad habit of mine to just pull them from 4,500 onwards because it just seems to be in a happy spot. You know, on the first pull, we weren't even trying. It punched out like 600 odd foot-pounds of torque. Mm. Now, you know, I've raced nine second aspirated cars and they had just on 600 foot-pounds of torque. So our integrated drive is eight rib, and on 98 Ron fuel, we saw just over 800, but we took the opportunity to then run it on E85, and naturally we saw the power jump. Man, a couple of degrees of timing, and you know, the thing made just on 900 horsepower. Which is fantastic for an engine of this oh. calibre. If you had, you couldn't use 900 horsepower on a, on a, you know, in a, in a Mustang, doesn't matter how good the setup was. Now we've also developed a heavy duty drive option that runs a Harrop billet tensioner and a 10 rib drive for like an alternator only setup where someone might be taking it to the track. And that's where we had the opportunity to really turn it up. Yeah, I think we saw a 22 pound of boost from memory.
it made like a, a thousand and seven horsepower, like not even trying. And that gives us the larger crank pulley, which is limited on this combination. And then you can run a top pulley to get obviously more blower speed and 22 pounds, a thousand horsepower on pump E85. It's, um, it's a killer combo. 100%, and we haven't even touched base, you know, that you could use a better cylinder head. You know, you can put more compression in the engine, you can put more camshaft in the engine. And then we didn't even do anything on ice water. So if you're going to the track and you want to have more horsepower, it's, it's there. Yeah, I think, I think on those higher runs, we saw a spread of about 30 degrees C from, you know, it ran from like 30 degrees to 60 degrees throughout the run. And that was at 22 PSI. Like at 14 PSI, these are so much more thermally efficient. It'd drive to Perth if you wanted to. That's the best part about it. In a street car, I don't think you could come up with a combination that makes power on tap like these. So we know the 302 Windsor 8.2 inch deck height is popular and a common phrase you see with small block boards is the cleavor combination. Which is a Windsor bottom end, it could be a 302 Windsor bottom end or it could be a 31 Windsor bottom end with a Cleveland cylinder head. And an extension of this will be to have an application to suit that? It would probably be the best outcome because it's the best cylinder head for airflow and making horsepower. Well, that might be the next one on the uh, program list, mate. I look forward to that one. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more updates. Check out our website to learn more. We'll see you next time.